Hey guys, Mark here with another fragrance review, but to be honest, this is not just another fragrance review. This is something that's close to my heart, reviewing a fragrance that I've really spent a good journey with. Um, Jubilation 25 from the Niche House of Amouage. Um, this is my very first fragrance review on the house. Um, when I first started sniffing Amouages, I knew that this was going to be my very first review from them. I just never knew it was going to take this long. Um, this fragrance was supposed to be slated for, I don't know, season 10 or 11 back in the day. And I never felt ready. I never felt like I was going to give this fragrance the justice that it deserves on YouTube. And I just kept pushing it back, kept testing some more, trying to get more information and try to delve really into Jubilation 25. I was actually a little excited when I finally finalized my season 14 and which fragrances I was going to review this year on, on this season and I knew that, you know what, it's now or never for Jubilation 25. Um, I, I believe I am, I'm going to give it justice today, hopefully I will, but this is very much a different fragrance review. You're still going to hear the good and the bad, of course, of every fragrance from me, but this one's a little more personal for me. So let's delve into Amouage and of course their crown jewel in my opinion, Jubilation 25. Now, Amouage, I'm going to give you guys, of course, with a first review on a fragrance, I like to give you guys a little bit of in-depth on the, the fragrance house itself, Amouage, and then delve into the fragrance. And then uh, you'll know a little bit more, especially for people that have never heard of Amouage fragrances. So Amouage is based in Oman. Um, in Oman, incense is a major export over there. Um, um, it's the best in the world, and uh, that's how they make their money. Um, their frankincense is absolutely outstanding, um, and it's a signature note in many amouages, of course, including this one. So you're going to see some reviews on these guys right here behind me. They're not going to take as long as this guy, but um, you're going to see that that silver frankincense from Oman is absolutely gorgeous, and it's in most of their, at least their men's uh, fragrances and some women's, um, definitely a, an absolutely gorgeous note, and uh, it really makes the whole package. And incense is my favorite note in a fragrance. So um, you got to delve into Amouage knowing that a lot of their fragrances has that note in it. Um, if you don't know Amouage as a brand, they're top of the line, guys. This is uh, where the, the basically the truck ends. <laughs> this is the high-end stuff. If you're really into fragrances, collect, collecting and all this stuff, um, after a while you're going to try to seek out the best of the best as far as pricing, high quality ingredients. Um, all this stuff. Um, the buck stops here. This is one of the best fragrance houses in the world today. The creative director of Amouage, Christopher Chong, um, when he first signed on to be Amouage's uh, director, um, really I felt his vision of the Amouage brand has really blossomed the brand to new heights. I really feel they're not mainstream, but uh, really he got the, the name out there. I really felt like Christopher Chong's doing an absolutely great job with the brand. Um, he's, you know, sticking to their vision as far as what they want um, as a brand and he's really just making this brand a, a top-notch, high-quality uh, brand. Beautiful job by Christopher Chong. Amouage, the brand, really wanted to tell the world about the ingredients found in Oman. Uh, the best frankincense in the world and, of course, so far. Um, some of the rarest rose, the rock rose in the mountains of Jebel Akhtar range in Muscat. Um, you're going to find both of these notes in Jubilation 25, of course, uh, since it is their 25th anniversary uh, fragrance, you've got to have those signature notes in that fragrance. Amouage scents tend to use these high quality ingredients in most, if not all, Amouage scents. The oud, um, you're going to find rose, incense, resins, spices, just to bring... Um, uh, bring you uh, the imagery of that area. Uh, they also offer uh, the noses that create their fragrances, some of the best perfumes in the world, um, un unlimited budget for their fragrances so they can go and get the best, the rarest of uh, ingredients to put in their fragrances. So an unlimited budget puts a smile on a lot of perfumes faces. <laughs> the results of these fragrances are most of the time opulent, rich, complex scents, some of the most expensive on the market definitely, but also in my opinion, some of the best the world has ever smelled. Truly as Amouage calls their fragrances a gift of kings, definitely, um, I really feel like that, uh, that really 
sums up the brand. It is a gift of Kings. Um, really just a absolutely, absolute treat when I'm wearing these Amouage fragrances out. Now, now let's delve into Jubilation 25. It was launched together with a female version back in 2007. You're gonna see a lot of these uh, all of these behind me have all been launched as pairs, a men's version and a woman's version. Uh, the way to see if it's a men's version or a woman's version is easy with Jubilation 25. Um, the 25, the number 25 is in uh, Roman numerals. Um, so you're going to see the men's version with the Roman numerals and then the woman's version just in the numbers 25. So that's the way to uh, see if it's the men's or the women's version. Now the reason behind, uh, of course, the name 25 was released in honor of Amouage's 25th anniversary. So really a fragrance that they wanted to celebrate their 25 years with and they did a excellent job. I really think this should be the face of the franchise, you know, uh, basketball terms, Kobe Bryant's the face of the Lakers. This is the face of Amouage. I really feel like this is the guy they should go with. Perfumier for this guy, Master Perfumier Bertrand de Chauffour. This guy was the perfect choice to do Jubilation 25. They wanted a fragrance that will uh, use all these great ingredients in Oman and no other perfumier is as good as De Chafour with the note of incense. This guy was the perfect choice. De Chafour, if you don't know him, has done incense based fragrances like Timbuktu from La Cisa Parfumar and of course uh, Avignon by Comme des Garçons, just to name a few, this guy is a uh, master with the use of incense uh, in a blend for a fragrance and he did an excellent job of jubilation. I really think this is his, his crown jewel. Once I do a, a, a fragrance um, or a video on De Chafour, you guys are going to know this is his crown jewel. In my opinion, I think this is the best work he has done ever. Talking about this fragrance, I think arguably <laughs> because people are going to argue this point I think is the best fragrance made in the world. Um, I know scent of course is, is very much uh, personal and for me I just kind of to be honest I found the one for me. Um, this fragrance is so uh, it fits my personality. Amouage fragrances fit my personality so well that this is the blend that I've been looking for for a long long time and uh, talking about that this is Ever since I've sniffed this, this has been my signature scent for the winter time. Um, I forgot about Le Mal, and it just kind of brings me back to everybody's journey. You know, I went from Le Mal to Jubilation 25, and these are two really different fragrances if you, you compare them. Um, my journey has changed, my nose has changed so much, and it's always so personal. So, definitely, I just say that this is if I say such glowing things about Jubilation 25, and you say something that it's not that good. You know, we're all entitled to our opinion, of course, so uh, definitely uh, sniff it out and, and see what I see in it. Maybe you won't and uh, continue your journey, but I really think that this is the king of my collection. Yeah, um, if I didn't have the income that I have now, um, this would be a fragrance that I'd spoil myself with. Um, I think it's one of the most complex scents that I've encountered. That's why it took me so long. It took me almost a, almost a three years of testing. Uh, with this fragrance. I never felt ready enough to review it on YouTube. Um, it's such a shame that not many people are going to smell this fragrance just because it's limited distribution. It's not everywhere. Um, and not everybody's going to know about the brand of Amouage. Or some people will pass it up. I don't think this is a one sample fragrance. You know, some people smell a sample, they're like, yeah, no. I feel a lot of people aren't, aren't going to give Jubilation 25 a fair shake. Um, this is one of those fragrances that you got to really delve into, you know, several samples in, uh, to be honest. And some people don't have the patience for that. If you don't like the fragrance first sniff, you're never going to like it. That's some, some people's opinion. For me, sometimes your nose grows and you'll find something that really meshes with your personality. And this is one of those that meshed with my personality. So guys, let's get into Jubilation 25. Enough personal chit chat about the fragrance. Let's get into it and let's take a look at packaging. Now let's take a look at presentation for Jubilation 25 by Amouage. Um, bottle sizes, this fragrance comes in two bottle sizes, the 1.7 ounce which is the one that you see here and the larger bottle, the 3.4 ounce. Pricing, you're looking at around $200 to $300 to purchase this fragrance, give or take. Um, definitely shop around and see if you can get a deal on these. Most likely you won't, um, but 
uh, they're they're pretty uh, expensive, and of course um, this concentration is EDP. Now Amouage, of course, presentation is a good reason why I've purchased a lot of Amouage fragrances. They're always top notch. I think personally. Now let's take a look at it. Now the box itself, you see lots of details, as you guys can see here, man. This is like hot stamp. This is the Amouage logo, gold hot stamp Amouage Jubilation Vingt Cinq. And you see all the detail. This is a hard, hard box. And then you got the King. This is a sticker. It's got like a crown on it. I don't know if you guys can see that. And uh, really nice detail to the box. And of course you open her up uh, on this gold line. Now as you open it up, as you can see inside uh, the box, um, it's all velvet in, in here. And of course the little uh, pedestal that they have here for the bottle. Um, a lot of people actually put their bottles in these little pedestals, if you'd like. Every Amouage fragrance comes with a, a nice little pamphlet here just uh, telling you a little bit of information. You can see the Amouage logo and the name and uh, to find out more about Amouage. But uh, inside, it's just a little thank you. And the person that actually personally packed uh, the fragrance for you. Um, so let, now let's take a look at the bottle. And of course, I just want to, not only are these uh, fragrances all hand packed and quality control over there in Amouage is great, but also all these little details that you see on the bottle here, the crest and all that, the cap, um, these are all hand applied. Uh, so all the details on the bottle, making sure quality control, awesome. So let's take a look at Jubilation 25. You can see the name Amouage right here. This is all embossed. I can feel it. And of course, this is probably glued on, I would assume. This is the Amouage crest. Um, then you see the Gift of Kings crest from Amouage. This is a plastic cap. You see a little jewel right here, and then if I zoom in on this, uh, you can see Jubilation 25 on the cap itself. Now, Jubilation is one of those fragrances that only has the plastic cap. Um, and uh, a lot of Amouages come with these heavier caps. Now, this is my reflection cap. Um, much, much nicer. Personally, I really feel like they should go with that, with Jubilation. But uh, again, just a stereotypical... Uh, sprayer here, atomizer, and that's about it. And then you got your batch code here. Sprayer, let's waste some juice. No, let's not waste some juice. Let's put it on my hand. Sprayer, good. Good mist. That's what I'm looking for. So, guys, let's get to the review. Jubilation 25. Now, the meat and potatoes of my review, of course. What does it smell like? What's in this fragrance? Let's go split screen, and you're going to see. A lot of notes. I had a hard time actually putting all the notes on my split screen here. You're going to see it's a, it's basically a mess. I couldn't really clean it up and make it as nice as I wanted to. But this is what we have. Um, Jubilation 25 has so many notes and so much of it you can smell. So you can't really say it's missing this, it's missing that. A lot of it's in there, definitely. Um, so I'm going to just pinpoint the major notes while I have the split screen up. Um, you're going to get a lot of that silver fragrance test. Of course, that's what this fragrance is all about. Um, you're going to get a lot of uh, blackberry off the top of that intro. You're going to have that blackberry, but you're going to get a lot of other stuff. You're going to get that orange. You're going to get that clove. You're going to get the rose, the honey, the bay leaf, the cinnamon. There's lots of cinnamon. You're going to get a lot of woods in here, cedar, uh, guyac wood. You're going to get some mirror too, some musk, um, ambergris, immortel. Um, oud, um, I can't even, you know, I'm, I'm going to name them all off, so that's it. <laughs> There's a lot of, of notes in this fragrance, and you're going to get a lot of it. Some people might just get a few of them. Um, this is a fragrance that you'll never get bored with it. So let's sniff out Jubilation 25. Uh, this is the best part. <laughs> let's, uh, let's spray this guy on my hand here. And let's waste the spray and see what Jubilation 25 gives me. And... <sighs> Jubilation 25, when you first sniff it, God, it, <laughs> you don't know which direction it's going to go to. You know, there's a lot of spice, there's some woods, there's some dark notes that I, I can feel a little bit of the oud, I can feel the blackberry, you know, um, there's a lot of, of, a lot of character in this fragrance, I could say, there's a lot of, the, there's so much going on in the intro itself, um, absolutely, and it keeps you guessing, and it's really a beautiful intro. I think the intro, I, I love the dry down, I think the intro is 
both of them are, are all-stars. Usually sometimes I say, you know, the intro is the all-star or the dry down or the hearts, the all-star, this fragrance, everything. The top's to die for. That's all I gotta say. Um, it hits your nose and you know right away you're in for a ride. Um, really, it gives you so much. You get tons of spices. You're gonna get all these spices. Your nose might not know what's going on here. There's some woods, there's that frankincense. There's some balmy notes in here. But most of all, you get lots of the blackberry, guys, off the bat. Now the blackberry, almost always, when I smell the blackberry, I always feel like it's gonna be like a dried fruit more than a juicy one, definitely. Um, the, the dryness of this fragrance, um, the woods and all the dry notes, the spices, really bring down that blackberry. It's not gonna be juicy, it's gonna be a dark one. There's a bit of orange here, but you know, it's a darker orange. Again, it's not juicy, it's not very uh, citrusy, um, but you can definitely tell there's an orange note in here, very dry, almost boozy-like. And I want it to say boozy, but I don't really want to tell people that this is a boozy fragrance. I don't think it's boozy at all, but it has a boozy-like effect to it, like fruits, um, like wine maybe. Um, it really has an opulent-like feel to the fragrance. All I can say at the moment while smelling this intro is it's rich. <laughs> and it is very much deep. There's going to be a lot of stuff in this fragrance. The dried fruit here have a bit of sweetness to them. That could be from the honey. I know there's a honey note in this fragrance. And I can definitely feel a, a sweetness. Now, again, it's not sugar candy-like sweetness. It's more like a honeyed, almost like a syrupy-like sweetness to this fragrance. Really, really nice. Now, the forgotten notes in Jubilation 25. A lot of people talk about the woods in this fragrance. The, of course, the incense, the main factor in this fragrance. The blackberry note, the orange, and all this. The forgotten part of this fragrance, which I think is a main factor in this fragrance, of course, are um, the heavy spices and herbal notes in this fragrance. I really think they make um, this fragrance have a lot more depth. It's just giving you another layer of Jubilation 25. And you'll get much of the coriander, the bay leaf, the cloves, uh, the cinnamon. I um, mean, really just all that drizzled with honey. And uh, don't forget a little pinch of orange, a little blast of blackberry. Um, honestly, to be honest, with this intro, again, uh, the blackberry is the star of this intro. I really feel it's not your stereotypical sweet bubblegummy type fruit. It is a dried up feel with spices and it really gives the scent a full bodied introduction. I know a lot of intros and fragrances that feel cheap or uh, transparent. It feels like it's missing something. You're, you know, they're giving you that citrus top note and that's all you're getting. This one, it almost feels like you're getting the depth. You're getting lots of layers here, and it kind of strips through a couple layers once it dries down. But um, really, this introduction has a lot going on with it. Um, really, really great stuff. Now, the Blackberry gave this scent an air of royalty to it. Um, I really kind of picture like a guy with his crown, and he has you know his cup with all the jewels encrusted on them, and he's drinking this this high end. Uh, liquor. Um, that's kind of this air of royalty that it's giving to me. It kind of really makes me think of a purple velvet crown with jewels on it. Um, it makes me think of a sultan, a king. Um, and with all this going on in the intro, I can't forget my silver frankincense in this fragrance. Um, you're going to start smelling it. It's backing up the scent quite a bit in this intro. It's not quite at the forefront because it's quite busy. Um, I really think you're getting more, you know, the, the incense, the oud, um, the, the woods, uh, all this stuff is more in the background and it's kind of shedding the layers and bringing the stuff up a little bit to the forefront. Um, the darker notes start kicking in a little bit more when time comes in, the oud, the cedar, among others. Um, really an excellent introduction to a fragrance and I can't wait to delve into, of course, the heart of Jubilation, so let's get to it. Now the dry down of Jubilation 25, the heart and the base, um, you're going to start losing your orange, your blackberry notes quite slowly. You're still going to get a small pinch of sweetness from the honey. I, I've really felt like that, um, that drizzled honey was always there. It's not at the forefront, but it really is a secondary note. The spices are still kicking around and they're still around for a while. I felt mostly the cinnamon and cloves in Jubilation 25, especially in the dry down. Um, these guys were really high octane as far as cinnamon and cloves go. And the woods come out to play. Um, Gaiac wood, um, agar wood, of course the oud, uh, 
Um, really came out to play the cedar. Yes, definitely. Um, a lot of people, the cedar with this fragrance punches. Um, <laughs> like several hours into this fragrance, people will smell cedar. They will say, you smell like cedar. <laughs> um, cedar really punches in this fragrance. Um, this is the part of the fragrance that has so much character that it blows me away every time and I really can't do justice because every single time I find something different with Jubilation 25, sometimes some notes are up front and some notes actually, you know, dry down a little more, you get a little bit more and a little bit less. Um, it's really a challenging fragrance and to be honest I really can't give it justice as far as describing the scent from top to bottom but I'm trying my best. Um, really it, it just gives me so much. The bay leaves play a strong secondary note here. I really felt like there was crushed bay leaves, you know, dried, crushed bay leaves in uh, in this fragrance. I really felt them. Uh, the main note, Injubilation 25, really shows its face here, finally. <laughs> and of course, that's the uh, that's the silver frankincense, the best in the world. Yes. <laughs> the incense is never heavy. Um, comparing it to, let's say, another Duchafour fragrance, Avignon, Avignon feels churchy. Um, you're going to feel that smoke. Um, the incense takes over the whole fragrance. That's all it is. Everything else is just smoked out. In Jubilation 25, the incense played a... it's your major player, but it plays so well. It dances with the secondary notes so well. It really reminded me of Timbuktu, how Adishafur did with the incense in that one. He did it in this one, but the secondary notes in this is Timbuktu, don't tell the people that left Tizan, but this overall picture, absolutely stunning. But it never felt too churchy. You know, this fragrance has mirror in it too, so mirror and frankincense really reminds me of church, always. Avignon reminds me of going to church as a kid. Um, the, the, in this set, these two never bring, bring me back to the church. I felt them, I knew they were in this fragrance, but it never felt too churchy to me. It never overwhelmed my nose. Uh, with it. It just had enough of the note to say it's there and then it's the main player and it, that's just a great sign of a masterful blend in my opinion. Um, if you're not trying to have a incense blast as far as I mean Yon goes but in other fragrances that incense takes over too much. Um, in this fragrance it just really felt like De Chiffour did his thing. Um, what a great blend of notes. Now there's a bit of wood in this fragrance giving it a solid backbone. Um, I would not call this a woody scent per se um, but it has a good amount of it. Uh, you get some of the oud, uh, definitely. I know a lot of people are going to miss it. It's not a big pungent oud. Again, toned down, uh, blended into the scent so well. Um, the oud is very soft in this fragrance. Gaiac wood, lots of cedar, and at times the cedar came to the forefront of the fragrance. I really felt like cedar was sometimes the major player in this fragrance. Uh, the rock rose, I uh, kind of forgot about the rock rose. The rock rose comes up a little bit in this mid. Um, it's some of the best rose in the world, of course, from Oman. And it gave it another facet to the overall picture of the scent. I never felt like it was a major play in this fragrance, but it's there. Um, I really liked the floral aspect of the rose in this fragrance. Again, it, it really kind of felt like more of a darker rose than anything. Um, this thing does not come off floral at all. Just because of all the notes surrounding it, it just gets muffled almost. Now I found at times that uh, wearing this fragrance that the moss and patchouli kind of came through with this fragrance a little more at the ending and with the cedar kind of punching up a little bit, kind of giving this a wet wood like accord. I know Oud does this from sometimes but it didn't really remind me of Oud honestly. Um, it really reminded me of moss and patchouli and cedar coming up a little bit and people were kind of saying you know you kind of smell like a, a musty, <laughs> a musky um, basement type of thing. Like it, it really feel like a musty patchouli like note in the fragrance. Um, green, mossy, wet with the cedar. Um, not for everybody, I'll tell you that right now. Um, I really felt like it was a challenging note at the end of the fragrance and it might turn you off of the fragrance but I really uh, enjoyed that 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 note in this fragrance. It really was interesting to, to see it pop up sometimes. Not all the time but sometimes it popped up a bit. Um, I also felt at times that many of the notes in Jubilation overshadow each other. A lot of them kind of give you the same type of idea, you know, some from the intro, from some of the bass, really kind of give you the same idea. They kind of give you like a different scent, but the same scent over and over again. It kind of felt like there's a lot of layers of this fragrance, like a lot of notes kind of overshadowing each other and giving you that same 
uh, idea over and over again. The layers in this fragrance fascinate me. Um, and they still do to this day. Um, I've worn quite a bit of Jubilation 25. I'm sad that I got the small bottle. I'm going through it. I'm powering through it. And I can't wait to get that 100 mil bottle soon. Uh, but it really does keep me entertained as a wearer. And that's really an important facet for me personally as a person that loves fragrances. Um, I get bored of fragrances quite a bit. You know, you're giving me the same stuff. Give me something different. Uh, a fragrance like this fascinates me. Um, every single wearing, it might be a little different, but it always keeps me entertained. And I don't think I'll ever get bored of Jubilation 25, and that is a, a must keep in my collection, to be honest. So let's get into my final take of Jubilation 25. Now my final take on Jubilation 25, this fragrance is <laughs> blended to perfection. Um, I really truly feel this is a masterpiece in our fragrance world. Um, I love the complexity of this fragrance, the deepness, the many layers of Jubilation 25. On the other side of the coin, I really felt like Jubilation 25 was not an edgy fragrance. When I feel a fragrance being edgy is like a black afghano, like, whoa. Like when you first wear it, you're like, holy Jesus, where where this come from, right? One of those fragrances, like an edgy fragrance, like Avignon, Heavy Incense, Leather Oud. Uh, by Zior. One of those fragrances, I didn't feel like Jubilation was like that, not an edgy one. Um, I really feel like this is wearable art. <laughs> a lot of people will feel like this is a, just an art form and shouldn't be worn by someone. Um, every time I wear this fragrance, I feel like a sultan or a king when I go out. I, I go out with this fragrance all the time, especially during the winter season. It's my number one most worn in the winter all the time for a reason. Um, I can dress it up, dress it down. Um, you can just dress it up just because it's uh, expensive juice, but I feel like I'm wearing a Picasso or listening to Mozart when I'm wearing this stuff. It's just high, it's a classic, I think, in the game. Um, it gives you many facets at different times, but the overall picture is always the same for Jubilation. I really felt like all right, you're going to get different facets, but you know what you're going to get from it, but sometimes it gives you a couple curveballs, but never bad curveballs. Uh, always a, a good curveball with Jubilation. This is the best blend of incense and secondary notes that I've ever smelt um, in a fragrance. Bar none. Um, some say it might be Timbuktu. Uh, no, it doesn't even hold a candle. And I'm a fan of Timbuktu, but this is great stuff. It might be one of the weakest as far as production goes, longevity and projection in the Amouage house but I think it's just perfect. I know a lot of these are high octane. Amouage can make a fragrance that can blow the room off the hinges with their projection and longevity. They know how to make a fragrance be beast mode, trust me. They decided, I think personally with this fragrance, they wanted to go more regal. They decided not to, they, I, I feel a fragrance is a little more luxurious, uh, more of a luxury fragrance, less abrasive, not more like shouting that you're here, more like a fragrance that just says, hey, I'm here, and then they smell the many layers and they think, wow, that's really a nice scent. I really think that this is the kind of scent that Jubilation is. Um, never too heavy or cloying in my opinion. Uh, because of its oriental style and many of the heavy notes in here, you'd think this is a cooler weather fragrance only. I like the laid back style of Jubilation 25. It, it never really shouts to me like a bold scent. Um, it makes it a little more versatile as far as fragrance. I, I could see like if this had a little more balls to it, um, high octane, I don't know, I think it would take away a little bit from Jubilation. I really think it's blended perfectly as far as projection and longevity, just perfect. Um, I don't want any more. Um, I believe this could be a unisex scent also. I think with the right woman, of course, uh, that likes the oriental genre, I really think that this could be one of the fragrances for you. Um, I really think Jubilation 25 is timeless, it's classic. This could be the flagship fragrance of Amouage and uh, for the brand. I really think it should be. Now, now, let's delve into the ugly side of the fragrance. Every fragrance, even though it's one of your favorites, has an ugly side, even though you don't want to admit it. Um, and that's what I do with my reviews. I give you the good, the bad, and if it'll fit your style. So let's go into why would you hate Jubilation 25. Um, a lot of people love the scent, but they say, eh, there's longevity and projection problems with this fragrance. I've heard that before. 
Um, it's not a beast in any way. I think it has good to excellent longevity and projection. It's not beast mode, uh, but a lot of people feel like it's really weak on their, their skin. Again, I really feel like this is a set that you have to test quite a bit to really get a gist of it. And I think some of these people just never gave it a full chance. But there is longevity and projection problems as far as what people are saying. Pricing's a problem. Yes, um, <laughs> it's a pricey little devil. And that would be a reason why you wouldn't want to uh, plunk down the money. Um, you have to be in love with the fragrance to plunk down that kind of money or you're a collector like me or you just love scents. Um, this might just be an art form for you and it's just not for you. It's not uh, matching up with your scent personality per se. For me, it matches up 100%. Um, a little mature. I really think uh, Younger Mark would be uh, going, what is this? This is, no, this ain't right. Um, too much spices, too much, no, too much going on here. This is not right. Where's my Lamal bottle? <laughs> um, it has a mature vibe to it per se. And again, it all depends on your taste. Um, hard to wear. Yes, um, this could be a fragrance. Again, it's a, I think it's a little more versatile than some of these guys back here that uh, you see that have beast mode projection longevity. I really think, uh, to me, it's easy to wear, but to some it might be hard to wear. And a lot of notes in this fragrance, so your nose, again, uh, might, a couple notes might hit you and be like, no, this is not for me. Um, and that's, of course, that's, that's, you know, that's part of the business, right? Now, awards for Juby. Jeez, do I really have to run down this list? All right. Has it been in any of my top 10, top 20 list? Yes. So many that I dread going through the list, but let's go through it one by one. Um, mostly fall and uh, winter list. So let's take a look at it. Uh, last year, it made my fall niche uh, top 20 list at number two. And then the year before that, my fall niche in 2011, again, that was a top 20, it made it at number two again. And then in 2010, uh, again, niche fall. This time it was a top 10. It made it at number six. Now let's go into the winter list. Winter made it number one three years in a row, basically. Top 20 niche 2012, 2011, 2010, and probably 2013. But uh, it's my number one niche for winter, definitely, and it's in top 10 for fall for me. I reach for this a lot. I wear it out a lot. Um, when it's cold, super cold, this stuff is absolutely great. It just gives me some warmth. Um, people really love it, smelling this on me. Group, this is an Oriental Fujal. Recommended age, I'm going to go a little higher. I'm going to go 25 and up just because it does have a slight mature vibe to it. How many sprays and where? I go simple. Three sprays, that's it. One on the chest, two behind the ears. I'm set. I'm good, good to go. Bottles. Um, fragrances that are, you know, around this genre, I would say Timbuktu, just because it's Saint Parfumier, uh, Brum's Dog by Eau d'Italie, um, that's another one, uh, I don't actually don't own that one, um, but I do own Timbuktu and I really did like the Eau d'Italie fragrance, I'm hoping to purchase that one soon. Uh, seasons, uh, mostly fall and winter for me, uh, I can wear it, I can wear it definitely in a rainy spring night, I would wear this also, so fall and winter mostly. Best time to wear this fragrance for me uh, in the cooler weather, of course, night out, um, high class event. This could just be, you know, a, a fragrance that you just wear for special events. Um, near Christmas time, I love wearing this. Uh, again, the spices, right? The cinnamon, the clove, um, the cedar wood, the woods in there it really kind of gives you like, I wouldn't say per se like a festive mood, but it, it really works really well during the Christmas and Thanksgiving time. Compliment Factor, Jubilation 25 is again one of those scents that's not super bold, but again, you're going to get some love with some paint. Um, my wife hates this on me when it's a little warmer. I caught her a few times saying, what are you wearing when it's warmer? She's like, that's disgusting. Yeah, she said that for Jubilation 25. Yet, I wear it in the cooler weather and she loves it on me when I'm wearing a coat and a sweater. So, go figure, right? Um, again, with these kind of scents, you get some good, some bad. Uh, my, my brother himself is going to buy one of these fragrances. Um, he wants jubilation from wearing it from me. A gift of kings, yes. <laughs> now, uh, my two cents, I've said enough about Jubilation 25. I've given you guys a little bit of personal taste in this review. It's a masterpiece. It's made for a king, honestly. Um, I know many that don't see what I see in it, and that's okay. 
but I implore you to give it another try. I definitely feel like this is one of those fragrances that uh, you kind of have to grow with it, and then once you it clicks, it clicks. And this one, no, oh, when it clicks, it clicks. <laughs> Now let's get to, of course, the rating system. Let's go split screen, and I'm gonna give you guys the rating on Jubilation 25, my first Amouage rating. Let's go, projection. This one gets eight bottles out of 10. It's high, it's excellent. Um, it's on beast mode, but it's actually just perfect for me. Projection's really good on this one. Longevity, again, eight bottles out of 10. Six to eight hours, any given wearing, a little weak. But this is what I'm looking for, for a fragrance. Again, perfect for me, six to eight hours is what I want from a fragrance. Sometimes it goes a little more, sometimes it goes a little less. Six to eight hours is what I want. Some of these amouages last 12 plus. This one, sometimes it does, not all the time. So I'm gonna give it an eight. Versatility, this is where it's gonna get a hit, seven out of 10. Um, I think it's a lot more versatile than a lot of people say it is. Um, again, it's not a beast mode fragrance that's gonna choke people out, but uh, I would wear this at, at work couple sprays why not um, definitely but again for the price some people just want to wear it for special occasions but I think it's versatile enough in the cooler weather 7 out of 10 on this one overall smell 10 out of 10 guys I can't even say enough about it and uh, of course overall score jubilation 25 um, there's nothing on the market like this today as far as this blend goes, um, I gotta give this one a perfect score. So welcome to the Perfect 10 Club. I had no doubt when I first sniffed this, this was gonna, per gonna be a Perfect 10 Club fragrance. This is the reason why I made the Perfect 10 Club because this guy is the Perfect 10 Club and, and uh, definitely welcome to it, uh, Jubilation 25. And that goes to buy, try, or pass. This guy, I gotta say, if I had to get one bottle from the House of Amouage that I, you know, I didn't have the income I had today, and I only had to pick one of these guys, this would be the one. This is a definite buy for me. This is a fragrance that I would treat myself to get. So guys, this is my review on Juby. Let me know in the comments below if I did justice to this scent. Jesus, I don't think I did, but we'll see. Thanks for watching YouTube. Have a good one.